بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از اسد یعقوب اینڈ ونس اگین آئی ایم ہیئر ود این ادر ورک شاپ آئی میڈ ون ورک شاپ آن آئلس آن مائی روف ٹاپ اینڈ یو گائز لائک دیٹ ویری مچ اینڈ یو آر آسکنگ می ٹو میک ورک شاپس آن ادر ماڈیولس ایز ویل اسپیشلی رائٹنگ ٹاسک ون اینڈ دین رائٹنگ ٹاسک ٹو سم مور ورک شاپس سو ہیئر آئی ایم ود این ادر ورک شاپ اینڈ دس ٹائم آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو tell you about IELTS writing task 1 academic which is report writing and for many students report writing is a serious problem I made another workshop that was on like I made a series of videos on report writing and those videos were equally good but this time I'm going to make another video actually in those videos I explained writing and I explained the writing task 1 report writing and I wrote some reports there as well so there are around 23 videos and those videos can help you but this time we are going to come up with some more ideas and all that now in report writing part 1 First of all, we are going to see the vocabulary for the introduction part. Introduction is the first paragraph of the report. And let me tell you in introduction what you are going to do. The question statement which is given in the report, like the table shows the number of and all that, or the bar graph shows the number of and all that. Okay, so you got to reword that. And that is actually what we call introduction. So uh, when you write introduction, there are certain phrases for that. For example, you can say, Uh, the given bar chart or the given uh, flow chart or the given process diagram or the given pie chart uh, write something like that you can write and then you can write uh, a diagram table figure illustration graph chart flow chart and whatever it is and next is the verb for verb if they have written shows you can write represents or you can write depicts or you can write enumerates for example you can say the bar chart enumerates or you can say the bar chart illustrates or you can say the bar chart presents gives provides uh, delineates or you can say expresses denotes compares shows contrasts if if there is the contrast indicates you can say the pie chart indicates or the graph uh, bar graph indicates or the line graph indicates so these are the words which you can use and you need to come up with a variety of words and then for description i mean the next part of your sentence is description for that you can write the comparison of if there is the comparison the comparison of three bakeries in london or the difference between two bakeries in london or the difference in sales of two bakeries in london or the changes in the sales of three bakeries over this time period the number of information on these words are very very useful and remember in ielts writing if you repeat repetition is going to bring your bench score down uh, substantially the proportion of if there is the proportion right so you can see the proportion of or the amount of the amount of coffee which was produced now for example you can say uh, the bar chart represents or the, uh, sorry the bar chart illustrates the amount of coffee which was produced in brazil and then you can go on with that uh, information about or information on Uh, the bar chart shows data on I, i'm telling you so many alternatives because you know repetition in ielts writing is like a virus okay <laughs> exactly repetition is like a virus and if you're going to go through this i mean if once you are infected by this virus then there is no cure and there is no way out next we've got information on data about comparative data a trend of or the percentages of the ratio of and how the Now I'm going to give you some examples of these words. Listen carefully and you got to write something like this. Let me tell you again this is Asad Yaqub's IELTS writing task 1 workshop. So example the diagram shows employment rates among adults in four European countries. The diagram shows employment rates among adults in four European countries from 1925 to 1985. First I taught you vocabulary now I'm teaching you how to utilize that vocabulary into sentences I'll divide it into 3 4 parts actually next is general statement part 
Now, what you need to do, you need to write a general statement about the topic, right? So now we are going to learn how to write that general statement. The general statement is the first sentence or the first two sentences you write in your reporting. In your report, you write a general sentence. As I told you, you got to reword the question sentence, which is written with the graphic information on the question paper. You got to reword or paraphrase that. That becomes your first sentence or first paragraph. It should always deal with. Now, remember, I'm going to give you a fantastic formula to deal with your first paragraph. Just remember three things when you write first paragraph of your report and that is what, where, when. I repeat what, where, when. So this is a three step formula to write a fantastic paragraph, the first paragraph of your report academic IELTS writing task one. How does it work? Let me just tell you. Example, the diagram presents information. The diagram presents information on the percentages of teachers who have expressed their views about different problems they face when dealing with children in three Australian schools from 2000 and 2005. Now consider this sentence and now I'm going to tell you how I created this paragraph using a three-step formula. Now let's see that. What? The percentages of teachers. You can see that the diagram presents information on the percentages of teacher. After that, we've got where? Three Australian schools. How? Who have expressed their views about different problems they face when dealing with children in three Australian schools. And then when? From 2001 to 2005. It's written from 2001 to 2005. So this is how you're going to create or how you're going to develop the first paragraph of your report while using this formula what, where and when. Now, let's go on. Next, we've got the vocabulary for the general trend part. What sort of words do you need when you're writing general trend? Uh, general trend part is basically the second paragraph of your report. We also call it overview. In my last videos where I made the 23 videos on report writing, there I mentioned it and I used the word overview for the second paragraph. Introduction, overview and body of the report or details. There you can write two paragraphs or even three paragraphs. It's all up to you or you can write one longer paragraph as well. But you can divide the data into two, three parts and then for each part you can write one paragraph. Okay, so let's go on for uh, vocabulary for general trend and then we will use this vocabulary into sentences. In general, in common, generally speaking, overall, it is obvious, it is observed as a general trend, as can be seen, as an overall trend, as is presented. It can be clearly seen that, now with all these sentences, I mean you can use one sentence wisely and this is how you can start the overview, second part of your report, the overview one. At the first glance, it is clear at the onset, it is clear that a glance at the graphs reveal that. So things like that you can write here. Now, without example, I'll not let you go. And through examples, I'm going to clarify all this vocabulary. So let's go on. Example, in general, the employment opportunities increased till 1970 and then declined throughout the next decade. This is overview of your report. Second example, as is observed, the figures for imprisonment in the five mentioned countries show no overall pattern rather shows the consideration considerable fluctuations from country to country the third example generally speaking first i used in general then i used as is observed and then i'm using now generally speaking generally speaking citizens in the usa had a far better life standard than that of remaining countries number four as can be seen, comma, after these phrases, you must use comma. Be careful about punctuation marks. As can be seen, the highest number of passengers use the London Underground Station at 8 in the morning and at 6 in the evening. As can be seen. Clear? 
Okay, well done. Let's just go on. I told you this is going to be a long video. Now, I'm going to teach you some vocabulary to start the report body. Just after you finish writing your introduction, that is general statement plus a general overview. A general statement you can write and even in the introduction, in the first paragraph, you can write a general overview. Now, there are two ways of doing it. Number first, first paragraph is very short, one to two sentences. In the second paragraph, you can write an overview or the first paragraph can be a little longer, up to three, four sentences. There you can revert the topic in first sentence and then you can write an overview in the same paragraph. It's all up to you, uh, the way you want to manage it. So, general statement plus general overview or trend. You are expected to start a new paragraph to describe the main features of the diagram and this second paragraph is called the body paragraph. Now we are going to talk about the body paragraph. Again I tell you there are two ways of writing the report, introduction, overview, body paragraphs or introduction, introduction means uh, paraphrasing plus overview and then the body paragraphs. Both ways it's fantastic, there is no problem. This second paragraph is called the body paragraph or we call it the report body. You can have a single body paragraph, report body or up to three or more than three in any case. It's up to you. It depends on the data, how you categorize the data, uh, how you, uh, what do you say, how do you divide the data into parts. So for each part you can write a paragraph. There are certain phrases you can use to start your body paragraph and following is a list which I'm going to tell you now. Now let's see, as is presented in the diagram or graph or pie chart or table, as is presented in the then diagram, you got to identify whether if it is a diagram or graph or pie chart or a table. Number two, as is shown in the illustration, now you can use any one of these phrases very very wisely, you don't need to learn them all, just learn up to three or four but I'm teaching you all so that that can improve your knowledge as well. Okay, next we've got, uh, as the diagram suggests, according to the diagram, according to the table, according to the bar chart, etc. Categorically speaking, see such a wonderful thing. Categorically speaking, comma, and then you can start your talk. Getting back to the details, when you write the body of the report, there you can write getting back to the details. Now turning to the details. The table data clearly shows that, the diagram reveals that, the graph gives figure, the data suggested that, the graph gives figure. It is interesting to note that, it is apparently seen that, it is conspicuous that, it is explicitly observed that. Now, if you are going to see something is difficult, some word is new, learn the meaning of the word, learn the spelling of the word and I am going to tell you whenever you learn a new word, how you are going to learn that. It is obvious, it is clear from the data, it is worth noticing that, it is crystal clear or lucid that, it can be clearly observed that, it could be plainly viewed that. It could be noticed that and we can see that, okay, fantastic. Let's just go ahead. Now, I'm going to give you some vocabulary to show the changes which is very important and remember no repetition in your report. Use one word once only, next you got to use synonym of that very word. Now, if there is uh, something or there is a trend that is increasing trend, what sort of verb form you can use for that, that's what I'm going to tell you. You can use two things, one is verb form and one is noun form. So I'll be very quick and I'll go through these words so that you learn them. If it is increase, what are the verb forms? The verb forms are rise, increase, go up, uplift, rocket, climb, upsurge, soar, shot up, improve, jump, leap, move upward, skyrocket, so and surge. All these verbs can be used to describe the upward trend, whether that upward trend is in the bar chart, in the flow chart, even if, if that upward trend is somewhere in the line graph, so you can always 
use that. Uh, so, not, not the flow chart, the line graph actually. The noun form, a rise, rise is a noun, an increase, an upward trend, a growth, a leap, a jump, an improvement, a climb. Now, most important thing, whenever you use verb, don't forget to use adverb. And whenever you use noun, don't forget to use adjective. In order to get good bench score, you must remember this. You must take my advice. If you are going to use a verb, it should be followed by an adverb. And if you're using a noun, there must be an adjective with that. Now, let's talk about the vocabulary for decrease trends. Fall, decrease, decline, plummet, plunge, drop, reduce, collapse, deteriorate, dip, you know, we know that dip, Dry, uh, dive, dive, yeah, go down, take a nose, nose, nose dive, yeah, take a nose dive, nose dive, okay, slum, slide, go into free fall, go into free fall means came down, so these are the wonderful words you can use in your report, but appropriately. There's a brief warning. If you fill your report with these flowery words without any logic, without any rhythm, without any proper use of grammar, these words will give you the lowest bands. But if you use them with proper rhythm, with proper logic, with proper grammar, with proper understanding, this can increase your band score. Next word, uh, nouns for, fall, for, fall, for decrease are a fall, a decrease, a reduction, a downward trends, uh, a downward tendency, you can use that, a decline, a drop, a slide, a collapse, and a downfall. Now, if the data is steady, I mean, if the increment is steady, or if, the, uh, if it is decreasing steadily, for that, you can use unchanged, right? If it is steady, means it is not changed at all. For that, you can say unchanged, level out. If the prices reach at a certain place and then they stop there, if the petrol prices reach at a certain place and then they stop there, for that you can say level out, unchanged, remain constant, remain steady, plateau means it reached at a top level and stayed there, remained the same, remain stable and remain static. Try to use the words which fascinate you and which are easier for you to learn and understand. And if you're going to use the noun uh, phrase or noun form, then you can use a steadiness, a plateau, a stability, and a static. Okay, if the increase is gradual, for, for that you can use some noun forms and they are an upward trend, an upward tendency. Try to use the word tendency, it's going to be a new word for some of you. A ceiling trend, ceiling trend means it's a gradual increase, ceiling, this is ceiling, so a ceiling trend. If the gradual decrease is noticed, then you can write a downward trend, a downward tendency, a descending trend and all that. And when we've got the stability, standability, standability or flat, for that you can use leveled off. Level off means to reach at, at, a, at a place or there, there isn't any change. Stability, uh, standability, one is stability, one is standability. Standability means it stood it did not change at all for, or flat. For that, you can use leveled off or remain or remain. Now, these are the verbs. You can use the past form of the verb or present accordingly. That's why you should know the tenses. Constant, remained, unchanged or remain unchanged, remained stable or remain stable, a prevail consistency or prevailed consistency, plateaued, right? reach or reached a plateau, stay uniform or stayed uniform, immutable or leveled out or stabilize, stabilize, you know when the prices are stabilized, remain the same and for noun form you can simply say no change, a flat, a plateau and all that. Now let's save some examples because I taught you all these words so I should tell you how to use these words in sentences as well. Examples, the overall sale of the company increased by 20% at the end of the year. The overall sales increased by 20% at the end of the year. 
Okay, now let's go on with vocabulary to represent changes in graphs. If there are the changes, rapid changes, moderate changes, steady changes or slight changes, we are going to learn some words and this time I'm going to focus on adverbs and adjectives. I told you, you need to use verb with adverb and you need to use noun with adjective. Verb, adverb, noun, adjective, you got to remember this. So we will be learning some adverbs for your verbs and some adjectives for your noun. If the change is rapid, I mean quick change, for that you can say dramatically, rapidly, sharply, quickly, hurriedly, speedily, swiftly, significantly, considerably, substantially and noticeably. Okay, and these adverbs will come with verbs. Don't use them without verbs. And if you're using a noun, with that you can use adjective. And the adjectives for rapid change are dramatic, rapid, sharp, quick, hurried, speedy, swift, significant, considerable, substantial, and noticeable. If the change is moderate, I mean one is quick change, rapid change, but if a change is moderate, for that you can say adverb forms, moderately, gradually, progressively and sequentially. Learn these words with proper spelling and proper use. These are adverbs and adverbs will come with verbs. Let's go on. Adjective forms, moderate, gradual, progressive and sequential. Now these adjectives will come with nouns and verbs will come with adverbs. Noun adjective and verb adverb combination. These are two important structures in your report writing. Next, if the type of change is steady, then you can say steadily, ceaselessly, steadily and ceaselessly. And if you're going to use adjective, it's going to be steady and ceaseless. And if the type of change is very slight change, for that you can say slightly, slowly, mildly, tediously. And if you want to use adjective, for that you can say slight, slow, mild and tedious. Now let's make some sentences with these verbs, uh, with these adverbs and adjectives. Number one. The economic inflation of the country increased sharply. Sharply means rapid change. Increased is verb. Sharply is adverb. Verb, adverb, connection. By 20% in 2008. Number two. There was a sharp drop in the industrial production in the year 2009. Sharp drop. Drop is noun, sharp is adjective. This is what we call uh, adjective and noun combination. The demand for new houses dramatically increased in 2002. Dramatically increased. Dramatically means rapid change. Increase is it went up, right? So increased is the verb. Dramatically is adverb. So this is verb adverb combination. Okay, let's go on. Uh, the population of the country dramatically increased in the last decade and the price of the oil moderately increased in last quarter but as a consequence the price of daily necessities necessity rapidly went up. So basically here we use the verbs, adverbs and nouns and adjectives. Now let's just go on. Next, we've got types of change and then the verb form and then the noun form. As I told you, you can use the nouns and adjectives and verbs and adverbs. Rapid ups and downs. For that, you can say wave, fluctuate, oscillate, vacillate, palpitate. And if you want to use the nouns, the nouns are waves, fluctuations, oscillations, vacillations and palpitations and remember verb will come with adverb and noun will come with adjective okay now we will talk about types of change uh, types of changes or differences and vocabulary to present them great change or huge difference for that we will use i'll tell you now adjective and adverb overwhelming great change overwhelmingly substantial substantially enormous enormously 
and if the changes are big for that we can say big difference or big change we can say significant significantly adjective considerable considerably and if the changes are medium changes or moderate differences for that we can say somewhat somewhat is noun and ad, uh, somewhat is uh, adverb and adjective at the same time moderate moderately usually adverbs end in ly and if the changes are minor or small then we can say fractional fractionally marginal marginally slight slightly okay now we'll be talking about dates months and years related vocabulary and grammar so let's see if there are the years because you always need to mention the years there are years there are dates there are months and you must know the appropriate vocabulary for that from 1990 to 2000 commencing from 1980 between 1995 and 2005 now remember with from you will use to like from 1990 to 2000 and with between you must use and between 1995 and 2005 after 2012 by 1995 in 1998 in february over the period or over the period in question that's what we write as well during the period or during this period during 2011 in the first half of the year for the first quarter the last quarter of the year during the first decade in the 80s in the 1980s during the next six months in the mid 70s next 10 years previous year next year between 1980 hyphen 1990 within a time span of 10 years within five years right or you can say next month next quarter next year next quarter means the next three months okay next year previous month previous year since then and from so this is how you got to write now let's talk about percentage portion and numbers and i'm going to give you some words some vocabulary words which you can use for percentages for uh, portion and numbers let's talk about percentages 10 percent increase 20 percent decrease increased by 15 percent dropped by 10 percent fall at 50 percent reached to 75 percent tripled three times more doubled one fourth one fourth of something three quarters half double double fold treble five times higher five times higher three times lower declined to about 49 percent stood exactly at 43 percent so these are the phrases or words which we can use for percentage portion and numbers now let's talk about fractions for fractions you can use four percent a tiny fraction a tiny fraction a little difference actually 24 percent is almost a quarter because if it is total 100 so 24 is almost a quarter 25% is exactly a quarter 26% is roughly one quarter roughly because it is more than 25 that's why 32% nearly one third or nearly a third because 33.33 makes one third so you say nearly one third or nearly a third 49% around a half just under a half 50% is exactly a half and 51% is just over a half if total 100 just over a half 73% is nearly three quarters 77% is approximately three quarters more than three quarters it's more than three quarters actually and 79% is well over three quarters so you need to use these type of phrases as well in your report just few more things before we finish this workshop on report writing okay for proportions you can say two percent is a tiny proportion a tiny proportion or a very small proportion four percent you can say an insignificant minority an insignificant minority now these are the words which you have to learn and uh, for four percent you can also say an insignificant proportion 
for 16 percent you can say a small minority or a small portion 70 percent is a large proportion and 72 percent is a significant majority or a significant proportion and 89 percent is a very large proportion okay so you should not forget that now we've got words or phrases for approximation you know sometimes the number is not exact if you say 70 but you are not sure whether it is 71 or 69 you're not sure about that so for those things we use some words for approximation and i'm going to teach you that vocabulary you can say let's assume a number we assume the number 70 so 70 means 71 or 69 let's just see approximately 70 nearly 70 it means it can be a little less as well roughly 70 it can be a little less or more as well almost 70 about 70 around 70 means a little less or more more or less 70 just over 70 it can be 71 or 72 <coughs> just under 70 it can be 68 or 69 just around 70 means 71 or 69 or somewhere like that just about 70 just below 70 and a little more than 70 means 71 or a little less than 70 that means again 69 and so on so this workshop is about IELTS writing and I'm giving you vocabulary uh, for IELTS writing let's just go on this time we are going to learn some vocabulary to represent highest and lowest points in graphs highest points and the lowest points in graphs uh, the type is highest point and lowest point so for highest point what sort of words you need to use and for lowest points what sort of words you need to use I'm telling you first I teach you the verbs and then adjectives uh, sorry nouns and obviously we'll be learning verbs and uh, adverbs and adjectives as well verbs peaked means highest culminated climaxed reach the peak hit the peak you can use these verbs according to your report the form of the verb first or second touch the highest point reach the vertex good word huh reach the vertex reach the apex now nouns for that for highest point the nouns are a peak or the peak a pinnacle or the pinnacle a vertex or the vertex the highest point or uh, an apex or the the apex uh, a summit or the summit means highest the top or a top uh, pinnacle means top point acme ACME you can use that as well and zenith zenith also means the highest point now if the points are the lowest ones for that you can say touch the lowest point get the lowest point reached the nadir nadir okay it's just like something which is the lowest one uh, nadir or nadir i don't know exact pronunciation I, i'm reading this word first time next we've got some nouns and the nouns are the lowest point the lowest mark bottomest uh, bottom most actually one is bottom and one is bottom most point rock point bottom rock rock bottom rock bottom point rock bottom point means the lowest one and the bottom most mark means the lowest one uh, nadir the all time low the lowest level the bottom and the rock bottom rock bottom means the lowest one so these are the words which you can use for highest point which i told you before and the words i recently told you you can use them for the lowest point now let's go on we've got vocabulary to show fluctuation ups and downs rise and fall in verb forms so let's learn with the verb form be erratic be erratic means it was standing tall like this rise and fall erratically rise and fall erratically so this is for actually fluctuations ups and downs and rise and fall changes sporadically changes sporadically means fluctuations rise and fall irregularly means fluctuations changes intermittently intermittently changes means there were fluctuations now let's see we will be learning some date month and year related vocabulary and grammatical rules between 
then we write year and then we write and it's a common mistake students write between and to right so with between we use and like between January and March between 1980 and 1990 <coughs> next from from 2005 to 2010 from January to August right from 20th March to 1st April like that in 1995 in January in February on we use on for day on Monday on Saturday uh, you can use any day of the week or you can use a date on 31st of August at in by I just taught you the use of these during during means year during 2010 during this period and over the period over the period means when the period is long over the century half a uh, later half of the year the year over the next over the past over the previous over the next few years over the past few years over the previous years days weeks months years and decades that's what you can use still our workshop is going on and i told you it's going to be a long workshop on ielts uh, writing task one now let's go on we'll be talking about presenting percentages if there are the percentages how you're going to present them you can present a percentage data in one of the three different ways it is suggested that you use all these formats in your report writing instead of repeating the same style to show percentages in your writing so uh, it is suggested that you use all these formats in your report writing instead of repeating the same style and show percentages in your writing so let's see for percentage you write in percentage or you can sign write the sign of percentage you can write it in three four different ways 20 percent with the sign 25 percentage with percentage and 10 percent separately so one time you can write the mark of percentage second you can write percentage third you can write percent two words uh, in proportion you can write two out of five every student out of three etc and then we've got in fraction for fraction you can write the third two fifth and a quarter one third two fifth and a quarter let's go on vocabulary to show how many times exactly the same right roughly the same practically the same twice means two times more thrice three times more four times four times more five times ten times and hundred times okay for a vo a vocabulary to show how much changed means the change came and the change took place but how much for that we say halved equaled doubled yeah doubled tripled and tripled uh, quadru uh, quadrupled pentarupled hexadrupled it's for six four let me tell you again quadrupled is for four times uh, pentadrupled is for five times hexadrupled is for six times septa sep septupled septupled is for seven times i'm reading these words for the first time octupled octupled is eight times and nonupled means nine times and centupled means ten times right if it is from 10 to 100 so there you can say centupled all right vocabulary to represent comparison in graphs now we are going to learn that very simple similar for that you can use about uh, for similar you can use the words like about almost nearly roughly approximately around just about very nearly and for just over one time you can use just over second time you can use just above just over just bigger just beyond and just across and you might be thinking the word just is repeating many times so that's okay okay just short for just short you can say just below just beneath just sort just under and just a little and for much more you can use the other words much more than well above well above well beyond well across and well over for much less you can use the words like well below well under well short and well beneath 
Now, let's learn some expressions to focus on an item in the graph. Use the following expressions to focus on an item in the graph. With regards to, in the case of, when you're focusing on a certain item in the graph. As for, turning to, when it comes to, it and they, where dash is concerned, where the prices are concerned, right? Regarding, regarding the prices and all that, okay, so you can write it like that. Now, let's continue and we are going to learn something about comparison and contrast. For comparison, you can say useful vocabulary to make comparison and contrast. So, let's see what is the useful vocabulary for comparison and contrast. Similarly, in a similar fashion, this is for comparison. In the same way for comparison, same as comparison and two things are same. As much as, meanwhile. And for contrast, you can say, however, one thing is going up, however, the other is coming down. On the contrary, on the other hand, and in contrast. Okay, now we've got one syllable. Adjectives with one syllable form their comparatives and superlatives form like cheap, cheaper, cheapest. It's a one syllable adjective large larger largest so if there is one syllable adjective we will use er and est to make its comparative and superlative degree bright brighter brightest exceptions are good better best not good gooder goodest okay bad worse worst examples the fast food items in uptown restaurants were comparatively cheaper than that of city restaurants so, if the adjective consists of two syllables, some adjectives with two syllables form their comparatives and superlative uh, like pretty, prettier and prettiest, happy, happier and happiest. Example, customers were happier than now. It's a comparative degree of adjective. According to the survey, as the price was cheaper in 1992, cheaper as the price was cheaper in 1992 means comparative. But many form their comparatives and superlatives using more striking, more striking, most striking, common, more common, most common, clever, more clever or you can also use cleverer or most clever or cleverest three or more syllables if there are three or more syllables syllable is the part of a word right that sounds together uh, all adjectives with three or more syllables form their comparatives and superlatives using more and most attractive attractive three syllables attractive more attractive most attractive profitable 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 more profitable most profitable expensive three syllables expensive more expensive most expensive the examples are the price of the custom made cars was more expensive in 2014 than it is now now we are going to learn some vocabulary to present linkers linkers means that join however on the other hand, similarly, on the contrary, meanwhile, in contrast and by comparison. Now we will be learning some vocabulary to show that something or a trend is similar or the same. The trend is similar or the trend is same. Use the following vocabularies if both subjects are the same or identical. Identical to, identical to or identical with, equal to or equal with exactly the same when two things are same you say exactly the same the same as the other you'll compare uh, precisely the same absolutely the same just the same uh, then you can use the following vocabularies if both subjects are not identical but similar they're not exactly the same but they are similar means both trends are upward they're not same but they are upward or both trends are downwards for that you can say almost the same as nearly the same as practically the same as almost identical or similar about the same as way to show that something or a trend is just the reverse or opposite now we are going to see 
when the trend is opposite or reverse what sort of words we can use for that or the phrases the reverse is the case one thing is the other going up and the other thing is coming down you say the reverse is the case or it is quite the appropriate or it is uh, quite the reverse okay now we are going to learn some rules of time preposition use so the first preposition is in use preposition in when you talk about years months decades centuries and seasons let's give you some examples years 19 in 1998 in 2015 months in january in december etc decades in three uh, in the 90s in the 70s centuries in the 19th century in the 14th century in the 1980s seasons in summer in winter in autumn use preposition in to talk about past or future past time in 1980 in the past in one two three five in the ice age in the 70s in the last century see that my workshop is comprehensive and intensive and extensive and this course on report writing is an extensive course next we've got prepositions on preposition on use preposition on when you talk about days days of the weeks or special days like days of the week on saturday on sunday on monday special days on new year's eve on your birthday on independence day on holiday on wedding day etc you can use preposition on when you talk about dates on july 4th on 21st january uh, 2005 on 5th may etc this fly is bothering me use prepositions on when you talk about times like morning afternoon evening night of a day on friday morning on saturday afternoon on sunday evening on monday evening etc however notice the below list that shows a further use of prepositions in and on for periods of the days versus periods this is often confusing and mistakenly used by IELTS candidates. Look at those and notice these things carefully and you got to memorize them. Next we have preposition at. Use preposition at when you need to express an exact time at 8 o'clock, at 10.45, at 2 p.m., at 9 o'clock. Use preposition at when you talk about meal times, at breakfast time, at lunch time, at dinner time. That's what I say to my daughter dinner time is family time you can use preposition at when you talk about weekends holiday periods or the night time at the weekend at christmas at easter at night words to make a comparison or contrast for that you can use a bit slightly a little only just approximately about almost precisely quite nearly considerably a huge a great deal quite a lot completely exactly and the example is this year population growth of the country is slightly larger than the previous year okay now let's use appropriate prepositions there are some phrases where we are going to use you must use the correct preposition in the IELTS writing task one to get a high score and these are the three prepositions which are commonly used in on at okay be accurate about the use of to by off with single f and o double f off in on for etc for is also preposition examples papers are sold by the rim by the rim oranges are purchased and sold by the dozen okay students enrollment in the university has increased by 22 percent this year eggs are counted in dozens rice is measured in kg he is junior to me by four years the employees are paid per week in this factory all these products are made of glass made of glass now we've got vocabulary using the appropriate prepositions it started at the sale started at twenty dollars it peaked at hundred dollars it reached at $100 or it reached $200. It reached the lowest point at $100. It increased to 80 from 58. 
or it decreased from 10 to 3 prepositions. There was a drop of 6 units, it dropped by 3 units. So, prepositions like on, in, at, by, to, from, for, they are the most important prepositions here. There was a drop of 6 units, it dropped by 3 units, it declined by 15 percent. There was a 10 percent drop in the next 3 years. Long workshop but very very useful and important. Okay guys, now we are going to learn some formal and informal language. Remember in your report writing you must use formal language. Uh, here I will speak about informal language and here I will speak about formal language or first I will talk about informal then formal. Go up, increase, go down, decrease, look at, examine. Find about, discover, point out, indicate, need to, required, get, obtain, think about, consider, seem, appear, show, demonstrate, illustrate. So, you must use formal words and formal vocabulary. Start, comments, keep, retain, but, however, so, therefore, thus. Also, in addition, additionally, in the meantime, in the interim, in the end, finally, anyway, notwithstanding, lots of or a lot of much or many. And this time, I am going to tell you some synonyms for some important words which you must write in your report. So, let us just take a start. We call it paraphrasing, illustration. Illustration can be replaced with diagram, chart and all that. As the diagram suggests can replace or can be replaced as can be seen or according to the diagram. Illustrate can be replaced by describe, show, present data on and trifling can be replaced by small or insignificant. Delineate, delineate delineate can be replaced by show, present, describe. From this graph, it is quite evident that can be replaced by in conclusion, in summary, in general. The most possible ground can be replaced by the most common reason. Elaborate can be replaced by describe, explain. Nadir can be, can be replaced by the lowest point. Apex or vertex can be replaced by the highest point. Sword can be replaced by sharply or increased. Skyrocketed can be replaced by very quickly increased. Frantically can be replaced by very quickly or very rapidly. Slumped can be replaced by quickly dropped. Plummeted can be replaced by quickly dropped. Surged can be replaced by went up, climbed or increased. Deteriorate can be replaced by fall. Dip can be replaced by fall or decline. Dive can be replaced by fall or decline or drop. And go into free fall can be replaced by fall, drop, decline, decrease. Plummet, plunge or slum can be replaced by fall, drop or decline and take a nose dive can be replaced by reduce, drop, fall, decline. Slide can be replaced by drop or fall. Decade can be replaced by 10 years. Projected can be replaced by predicted, forecasted, estimated. Overwhelmingly can be replaced by greatly, significantly and hardly can be replaced by barely and merely. At the onset, it is clear, at the onset it is clear can be replaced by as soon be seen as can be seen from the graph. Indicate can be replaced by point out and all in all can be replaced by in summary, in conclusion. Obtain can be replaced by get and comments can be replaced by start. In the interim can be replaced by in the meantime. Correct can be replaced by right. Inexpensive can be replaced by cheap. Depict, show. Plateaued can be replaced by remain the same. 
oscillate, vacillate, palpitate can be replaced by fluctuate, dislivity can be replaced by drop, fall or decrease and aslivity can be replaced by an upward slope, an upward trend or increase. A steep fall can be replaced by a quick fall. So this was a complete IELTS report writing workshop. Watch this workshop carefully. I hope you would have watched it very very carefully and you would have learned a lot from this IELTS report writing vocabulary workshop. Learn all these words, learn to use, learn to use these words into sentences, learn to identify the key trends in your uh, uh, graphic information and once you do that you can always get a good bench score in IELTS. I'm feeling so much tired after this long workshop. If you like this video, hit on the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel. I also teach IELTS online. If you want to join my online IELTS classes, you can contact me for that. Now that's it about report writing. It's over to you to work hard and improve your skill. Asad Yaakov wishes you all the best. Take care. Allah Hafiz.